This is the last piece of the Final Fantasy VII uh, remake revisited type stuff. So uh, this article for Final Fantasy VII Remake Revisited kind of goes over the entirety of the game and where we essentially end up throughout the whole game. They sort of give their development thoughts and processes uh, on their decision making uh, throughout the entirety of the project. And it's been pretty crazy. I I've not read every single one, read like uh, a, a few chunks of them. But this one, you know, obviously is related to the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, where the most interpretation can be pulled. So there's a few things I definitely want to want to talk about. A few spots in here that are definitely worth mentioning. So there's a couple of there's a couple of moments. Uh, anyway, and probably right here. Wow. And I re here's the crazy part. This is officially coming from Square. And once again, I would just like to reiterate: people said. I was crazy, right? People said we were crazy when we actually said that there was a deeper meaning behind these random events and all these goofy characters, right? People said we were crazy a couple years ago uh, that, you know, all the crazy stuff that's happening towards the end of the game actually is tied to Advent Children and stuff like that. So, turns out Whisper, uh, Rebram, Veridi, and Carisio seem to represent Kadaj, Laws, and Yazoo from Advent Children fighting to save their own future. References the entries that appear after using the assets material on each. Is this true? The Whispers are capable of forming monsters from all the memories in the flow of time. And I think that includes the characters who exist or who will exist in the timeline as well. He didn't say no. I like it how like they, they make this a question because so many people were picking up on this thing. I mean, of course they are. They literally have all the same weapons. They literally do. So of course we fucking called it, right? There's a, the, the, the ending of the game felt very random, right? Like, like most things on the surface level feels very random and what the hell is going on and what the hell are we doing? Um, but I didn't, as soon as you start looking at it and paying attention to the bigger scope of the game, it's pretty clear that they have a, they have a plan and a path for this shit. And, I, w I won't lie, on, on even even on my first playthrough, it's kind of like, what the hell is going on? Like, what? How did we get from the bridge to this shit? Um, anyway, let's let's move on. Uh, next, the party has shown memories of the future as told in the original seven. Was there ever a concern that this wouldn't be obvious to fans playing Remake without no prior knowledge? Cloud and the team do not really understand what they are seeing in this scene, where they are granted memories of the future. So of course it makes sense that the audience wouldn't know either. So it is fine and the full meaning behind the visions is not communicated to the player. So yeah, it's like the fact that some, like if you're a fan, you have an idea that, oh, and this is this is the wonderful thing about the way they sort of treat the end of this game. They're kind of like, oh, so if you don't know what's going on, you're essentially in the shoes of the character because the characters don't know what the hell is going on. They do not understand these visions and why these things are happening, right? If you understand it, if you played the old things and watched the movies and all that kind of stuff, you do you do know that, wait a minute, why are they showing us footage of Advent Children? Why are they showing us footage of this stuff? Why, wait, what the hell is going on? So even, there's a question on both sides, right? It, it makes sense the way that they're treating this. They do not specifically give you enough information to come to full conclusions if you are either completely versed in knowledge from the previous games or if you're not, because we're still in a similar boat. We don't really know why these things are showing up in some way. So I think it's handled kind of brilliantly. Uh, once you start putting a little bit of thought into it. Let's see what this says. The Midgar Highway stage was created specifically for motorbike action. Remember, it was a large map and it uh, must have been made in a way uh, different way to the regular stages of the game. Was there any difficulties in creating the highway? It's hard work because the clusters of buildings across the wide area. Oh, this is talking more about level and map design. Um, hang on a second. Let's read this one. This is this is crazy story bullshit. The battle with Sephiroth features various phases, different party members depending on conditions set throughout the story and crazy camera angles throughout. How difficult was it to put all this together? Um, because yes, it, it feels like the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1. No joke feels like it's the end of everything, right? They, they, it, the, the end of this game feels like it's almost what the final battle should be at the end of everything, but it's not. It's, it's just the beginning. There were numerous mechanics and systems specifically made for the battle and was one of the ones that we took a lot of care on, as well as one of the trickiest to pull off. There were also a lot of bugs that needed fixing and it took a long time to make overall. You can't just, that's all you're saying about it? Come on! There was a lot of bugs and we fixed it and it was hard and we did it? Come on, man! Come on, man! The remake put unrealistic expectations for the original? Um, yes, because it isn't the original. 
because as soon as you start playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, and if you played the original, you know it's not the original. It's, it's a sequel. It's a sequel to FF7. It's not the original game. So One Winged Angel is another wonderful arrangement of the most famous tracks in video game history. Uh, what was it like being interested to rearrange the track? So how pleased it came out. Uh, and no kidding, I think, I think One Winged Angel Rebirth is arguably even better than One Winged Angel Original. It's like, it, it's, it's like comparing, you know, one Winged Angel Rebirth is, in my opinion, is Final Fantasy VII Remake to Final Fantasy VII, right? It's doing all of these things and trying to keep all of which the original has and just executing them times 10, right? We're just going to take what all the original has and execute it times 10. However, like, Beethoven's Symphony is fucking Beethoven's Symphony, you know? It is never going to be, uh, like, untouched, right? It, it is, it's never going to be this thing that you're going to conquer, right? In the same way that Final Fantasy VII is a game that is absolutely stable in time, is a game that, like, changed everybody, right? A game that, like, changed the industry, did everything. You're not going to be able to take away Final Fantasy VII from Final Fantasy VII. You're not going to be able to take away One Winged Angel, the music that it is, from One Winged Angel. All you can do is, inc is make it try to make it better is try to like increase the things that the original did and that's kind of what angel rebirth does which i'm really happy about i listen to that song and it makes me hyped as fuck dude i can't believe it so i really i really like one winged angel rebirth and i think that it it very much encapsulates ff7 remake compared to og ff7 because you're never going to be able to surpass the original like the uh, the the impact the original had on the industry much less the game itself much less the music you can't all you can do is like make existing fans happy and make something new that sounds ridiculous you don't remember the rebirth version i start playing a little bit of it you'll remember it Jesus Christ. It's... I'm gonna read this while you listen to this. One Winged Angel is one of the most important music tracks of my whole life, so I was asked to arrange it. I felt a great responsibility to make a good version, even if I had to use the rest of my life to do it. It goes without saying that I like everything in the original composer, Mr. Nobuo Uematsu, it has done, and I loved Mr. Shiro Hamaguchi's orchestration. Uh, so the music of these two creators had a massive influence on me. When I set out to do my new version of this track, I first searched for what kind of arrangement would make a version of One Winged Angel that would satisfy me personally. Something that did not, did not damage any of the numerous appealing factors of the original, and most importantly, something that would not disappoint me or corrupt my childhood memories of hearing it. Yeah, I'm, but going off of what he's saying, this song has, has drops. Like, right here. I'd argue it's better than the original in many ways. Uh, as the original track was One Winged Angel Rebirth implies, the keyword to explain the new arrangement is Rebirth. I mentioned this in the Ultimania guide, but I remember seeing a comment from Uematsu somewhere in which he talked about how the approach to the original composition, but my first creating a number of different motifs, then trying to piece them together in a manner of a puzzle. I started my arrangement in the spirit of reconstructing that original puzzle, breaking it back down to its con con constituent fr phases, phrases, and then putting it back together in a new order. On top of that, the battle is split into four separate phases, so I also had to make the arrangement of each phase fit with its own distinct character, while at the same time making sure the excitement and tension built as it gradually progressed. And then it, it, it subverts you. It doesn't keep going. No shit. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> this shit makes me so happy. Oh my fucking god. Phase two. Here. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. So 
I took particular care in Phase 3, where Sephiroth shows his wing for the first time and all the players come together, marking the start of a fierce final confrontation. I felt that this was the point I needed to raise the player's excitement level to peak, and decided to do that, do that by bringing the timpani drums for the introduction. They had not been here yet. This is the first time you hear them. Always baiting. Yep. Never, never delivering until it's perfect. The most distinctive phrase from the whole track, and then I worked back to create the whole composition. Nothing will really come of it, I say this, but the end of my personal favorite of One Winged Angel is the original one. However, I do think I achieved what I set out to do here and created a worthy remake of the track and would not bring shame to my memories of it. Jeez, and this is, right? And this isn't even the best part, <laughs> right? And this isn't even the best part. To me, like, the best part is around here. It's gonna be over, right? It's almost over, isn't it? It's not over! It's not over! It's never over! It's never over! And it sounds like it's gonna end, but this is just the beginning of phase four. Because the best part happens right around here where they bring back themes from the original game. This shit, this, this shit is crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my, oh my god. Jesus, dude. Anyway. Uh, I think it's one of the, like, it's, it's obviously, you can't beat the original. You can't. And the fact that, the fact that Yashinori Nishiki knew that, right? I'm not going to betray my memories as a child, right? And that, that further encapsulates the entire theming of like Final Fantasy VII Remake and how they approach the whole goddamn game, right? They approach the whole game in the same way that we don't want to destroy what people remember. We want to add to it. We want to like, we want to just take what it was before and just dial it up to 10 or 11 because now we have the capability of doing so. Friggin' amazing, dude. You know, I'm not going to finish the full song. That just, that, 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 that song just perfectly metaphorically describes FF7 Remake and like the way they were able to execute all this shit. Was it perfect? Not in every single way, but in the ways that we were worried it was going to be bad, shit was like 11 out of 10. Anyway, are the attacks Cloud uses on Sephiroth here meant to resemble Omni Slash from the original 7 <clears throat> and later shown in Advent Children? What were the concepts behind the design of this heated battle sequence? I will leave the actual names of background behind the techniques here to players' imaginations. We did not envisage having a scene where Cloud and Sephiroth face off in a duel when we started the development, so we were excited while making it. At the start of this scene, we deliberately made the camera movement similar to when the two of them fought in the original FF7. So we're talking about the, uh, at the precipice of fate or whatever the heck this final, uh, de de what is it, Destiny's Crossroads? Um, and then it moves on to the action part, showing Cloud dauntlessly struggling against all-powerful Sephiroth. I have to pull up, I, I need more music. Hold on a second. Uh, Edge of Creation, that's it. Uh... Yeah, and this scene is... this scene is...
so goddamn good. So friggin' sick. We consulted with a sword fighting choreographer who offered the opinion that because of the difference in the reach of the weapons, Claude had a little chance of winning if he tried to fight at a distance. Accordingly, we went on to choreograph it to have Sephiroth parrying and evading while Claude continuously tries to press in the fight in close quarters. It may appear to be a fairly even match contest, but Sephiroth is not actually being pressed very hard here. Thank you for sharing your memories on the work of Seven Remake. Is there anything you would like to say to fans after reading this whole blog series? As it says at the end of the game, the unknown journey will continue, and Cloud and his friends will be on that journey for a while yet. From here on, in the whispers, uh, from here on, the whispers cannot act to maintain the destined timeline. Literally answering the question, I don't like all that whisper shit, right? Literally saying they're gone. So fans can look forward to seeing what kind of future awaits the team. From the co-director and scenario designer, and from the new director. Uh, thank you for sticking with us all the way through the blog series. The development team and I are currently hard at work on the second game in which the story moves away from Midgar and expands onto the world map. And it is not just the story. I'll be working day and night to ensure the game design also offers an even more thrilling ride and is packed with even more surprises than the first game. I am very grateful for being given this opportunity to send my message to all the fans. Um, going ham on part two, right? going ham on their Godfather 2 on their Empire Strikes Back of the series. Yeah, I feel that. Makes a lot of sense to me, right? And I, I, I like the fact that it's like, yes, we're going to subvert some expectations here. It's not going to be a one-to-one, -one, but they, as they said before, characters are still going to be visiting all the same places that you remember. Things are still going to be happening. They just might not happen the exact same way as they had before. Yeah, and Zack might be alive somehow, <laughs> you know? Just might be alive somehow. Uh, dope! Extra dope! What's the next one, chat? There was another interview that popped out earlier today, though. So, thoughts and predictions, I guess, right? If it's just more reiteration, I saw two articles, but I guess it was just, you know, the culmination of events and the quotes that happened as a result of the uh the remakes revisited blog posts which there was a lot there was like 18 parts or something like that uh m thoughts and predictions that they're actually going to show more of this game before uh potential like e3 next year because e3 next year would be the time frame where we would see it 2023 uh to, to 2024 potential release date like like fiscal 2023 it's still a possibility and i i think that there is even a small chance that you know, something at the Game Awards could possibly show up for this. I wouldn't even... I honestly would not even be surprised. So, it, it's pretty clear that they're not afraid to have, like, a an overlap with Final Fantasy 16, right? Because we, they've already actually shown FF7 stuff for Rebirth, and Final Fantasy 16 is still on the horizon. Uh, I, I think it's more like, when are we going to see more Final Fantasy 16 stuff? Because if that if that doesn't show up until the Game Awards, then it, this might likely not will not happen. But if 16 is shown earlier, then there's a very good chance that one of those spots could actually be for 7 Remake Rebirth. Let me see if that dash, if that's anything of, of interest. Yeah, this is the same quote from uh, from the end of the, the uh, blog posting stuff. Damn. Same stuff. Well, that's about it, right? More of the uh, more of the directors like hyping us up, letting us know that the sequel is going to be even better, <laughs> right? That like literally talking about expanding onto the world map type shit, but not directly saying is it going to be a open world game specifically? And we've already had a lot of conversations before where we think it's going to be that or it might be that, you know. You mentioned world map in the first article. Does it mean part two might be more open exploration? I think it absolutely will be. I think that was the whole point of showing the early gameplay stuff was to show the size of the levels, the size of the world, you know? Well, I think that is, that is going to be the expectation of fans. And that is, it's, Square already seems to have a very good understanding of what like, what people sort of expect. And I'm, I would not be surprised, right? I would, I would not be surprised that this is going to be 
Um, this is going to sort of like have the things we expect it to have, but also have things that we're not expecting it to have, um, which is hard to hard to call at this point, you know?